Welcome to the presentation on market organization and structure. Just as an introductory remark here, this is a very long reading and while it is presented in the equity investments segment, the scope of this reading actually goes beyond equity and talks about markets not just for equity but other types of investments also and uh, there is a tremendous amount of theoretical material here so a lot of definitions to learn i would suggest that you don't get uh, hung up with all the details but make sure that uh, for every item mentioned in this presentation you need to know at least one or two lines uh, or you need to know how to describe essentially every every major item that you see in this presentation so let's start by talking about the main purposes of the financial system. In very simple terms, the financial system allows money to flow between those who save and those who borrow. So simplistically speaking, there are some people who have more money than they need right now, so they save. And saving is essentially a way of putting money into the future and getting a return in the meantime there are others who who have ways of spending that money so for example a uh, industrialist might not have enough money to set up an industry but he needs money so such an industrialist will will borrow so essentially what the industrialist is doing is he is moving money from the future into the present doesn't have money right now so he borrows and then he will return this money in the future the financial system is a efficient way of bringing together those who save with those who borrow and put it putting it another way essentially it allows people to save it allows people and institutions to borrow and hence everybody in the system is happy as long as the financial system works well and does all the things that it is supposed to do a related point is that the financial system allows uh, entities to issue equity we will see this in a lot of detail later but a company wants to raise money so it issues shares and by issuing shares it not only raises money but those who contribute money through this process also become part owners or shareholders in the company the financial system can also be used to manage risk and we will be talking about several derivatives such as forwards futures etc that allow individuals as well as organizations to manage their risk an entity that is using the financial markets to manage risk is called a hedger the financial system allows individuals and institutions to exchange assets so for example when you when you buy shares of a company you are paying dollars and getting shares so that's an exchange of assets in the currency markets you might be selling dollars buying euros that again is a exchange of assets so there are numerous more examples but essentially the financial system makes it uh, efficient and convenient to exchange assets. The financial system also allows individuals and institutions to trade on information. An example here is if a person studies the markets and determines that a given share is underpriced based on the information he's collected and the research he's done, then he can make that investment with the view that this investment is currently underpriced and the value and price will go up in the future. There are several questions in the curriculum related to this material and the key point is that the example I just gave is that of an information motivated trader. So just as a quick summary again, information motivated trader is one who trades because he thinks that the price is currently low and therefore he buys. Similarly, an information motivated trader who thinks that the price is currently high will sell. In the, in the curriculum, we'll notice towards the end several questions that test this. 
and try to fig they they give a scenario and then see if you can figure out whether the individual or the institution is trading based on information or whether it is hedging risk or whether this is a pure investment a simple investment would be where somebody puts money in a asset or buys an asset that is fairly priced and this person has simply put money in that asset with the intent of receiving a regular return which what which is a return one would expect from that investment over a period of time so that example is one of a regular investor now the function of the financial system uh, number 1 is to achieve the purposes described on the previous slide another important function is that it helps us discover the rates that equate aggregate savings with aggregate borrowings so essentially this is rate discovery and there will be a different interest rate or a different rate for different time maturities for example there might be people who want to save for one year and there are those who want to borrow for one year the 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 people who are saving for a year will contribute a certain amount of money based on the rate those who want to borrow will borrow a certain amount of money and let's we have seen this before in economics but i will refresh your memory very fast if you have the quantity of money that needs to be saved and borrowed in the one year time horizon on the x axis and you have the amount and you have the rate or the price of money so rate essentially is the price of money so you have the rate on the y axis as far as savers are concerned the higher the rate that they get the more that they would be willing to save so this is essentially the supply of money and then in terms of those who want to borrow they demand money and for them the demand for money will be more if the rate is lower based on this supply demand in the one year market for money there is a certain equilibrium rate which basically the markets help determine similar we can draw a similar picture for the two year saving and borrowing three year saving and borrowing and so on and essentially at least simplistically put the markets help us determine the relevant interest rate for different time maturities and finally the financial system allows us to allocate capital to the best uses capital is um, is limited finite and so through the financial system those who need capital the most or have the most efficient use for it will be willing to pay the most for it and hence they get to use the capital fundamentally you need to memorize the points on this slide as well as on the previous slide now let's talk about the classifications of assets and markets what is the distinction between financial assets versus real assets financial assets are stocks bonds derivatives and so on so they don't have a, a real substance uh, they essentially a stock is some is is a piece of paper that gives you uh, ownership claim or that gives you a claim on future cash flows similarly bonds give you so when you hold a bond that's a promise from a bond issuer that you will get certain cash flows in the future so stocks and bonds are classic examples of financial assets real assets are tangible so uh, property plant equipment etc are all examples of real assets traditional versus alternative assets traditional uh, tr traditional assets or traditional investments here refer to stocks and bonds which is what people have traditionally invested in alternative assets is a new class or a, r a relatively new class of assets which includes uh, commodities it includes hedge funds private equity etc later on there's a full uh, study session on alternative investments where we'll cover the various types of alternative investments public versus private securities 
so a public security would be a publicly traded share or a publicly traded bond private securities would be where a given company might sell uh, let's say 20% of of the company to a private investor so private securities are owned by private investors and these are not traded in the markets so if i own say 20% of my brother in law's company that would be considered a private security and to sell it i would have to go find another uh, entity that would be willing to buy that share primary versus secondary market so again i'll go through this briefly now and we'll see this in detail later so in a primary market you have the you have the issuer directly selling either shares or bonds so let's take an example where uh, let's say general electric wants to issue new shares so general electric might go to its investment banker let's say that the investment banker for general electric is goldman sachs so if ge goes to goldman sachs and goldman sachs buys 10 million dollars worth of new general electric shares this would be an example of a primary market transaction and then goldman sachs goes and sells these 10 million shares in the new york new york stock exchange so the new york stock exchange and in fact all stock exchanges in the world are examples of secondary markets the fundamental distinction between primary and secondary is in the primary market the issuer sells and receives dollars in the secondary market investors and traders they exchange the assets or they exchange the stock so when stocks are bought and sold in the secondary market the uh, money flows between investors and traders and so on that money does not go to the primary issuer spot market versus forward market in a spot market assets are bought and sold right now so if we talk about the spot market for gold this would be you you go to a, a gold bazaar and you buy and sell gold that would be a spot market or with cotton if you go to the the cotton exchange and you buy and sell cotton today at today's prices that's referred to as a spot market forward markets are markets where you agree to buy at some point in the future so you are sitting over here and you agree to buy 1 ounce of gold for x dollars so an agreed amount agreed upon amount of money and you agree to do this after 3 months so you essentially get into a contract to conduct a transaction in the future that's a forward market future markets are essentially standardized versions of forward markets and we will see this um, we'll talk about these in detail later money markets refers to uh, buying and selling of uh, short term liquid financial instruments such as government bonds government t bills so generally when you are uh, buying and selling financial assets with maturity of less than a year that happens in money markets capital markets refers to longer term debt securities longer term equity securities that either that that might mature after a long period of time or that might not have a maturity date so for example when you buy and sell equity uh, stocks they do not have a maturity date now let's talk about different types of investments and again as i mentioned earlier this is an overview reading each one of these items will be discussed in a lot of detail later so fixed income securities simplistically put these are uh, these are various kinds of bonds and when a company or an entity issues a fixed income security what they are doing is promising a series of cash flows in the future so a company raises money now and gives money to the investor through a promised series of cash flows over a given period of time equity securities include common stock 
which represents an ownership stake in the company preferred stock and warrants warrants are to some extent like long term options and we'll see these later we can also we also have pooled investment vehicles such as mutual funds asset backed securities hedge funds so in pooled investment vehicles several investors uh, pool their money and then the investment manager takes this large pool of money and makes investments when as far as a mutual fund is concerned he will buy several stocks or for asset backed securities uh, this is slightly more complicated and we'll talk about it later or this money can be a hedge fund in which case there is a whole variety of stuff that can happen with the pooled money these are slightly complicated and we'll talk about them later but essentially with pooled investments several investors pool their money and then the fund manager who collects that pool of money makes different kinds of investments depending on the nature of the pooled investment vehicle continuing with investments uh, currencies are also considered investments so for example if we believe that the that the swiss franc is going to appreciate in the future we might uh, take a long position in the swiss franc which means that we buy swiss francs forward contracts that i alluded to briefly earlier means that you get into a contract with another private party to buy let's say let's say you agree to buy uh, cotton at a given price after 6 months so this is an example of a forward contract the person who agrees to buy after 6 months at a given price is called the long party the person who agrees to sell is called the short party and this contract is binding on both the long and the short and as you can see this is an example of Uh, how so so this is an example of how some risk management can take place so the cotton farmer who does not know what the cotton price will be after 6 months by getting into a a short position where he is selling cotton at a given price he has hedged his risk by locking in a certain price and let's say that the textile owner who is getting into a long position he also doesn't know what the prices will be after 6 months but by getting into the long position on a forward contract he is also locking in a certain price so in a sense they both parties are uh, hedging their risk in this simple example there is a there is a uh, issue of some counterparty risk when we talk about forward contracts because forward contracts take place between two private parties so there is a risk that one of the parties will default and that's referred to as uh, credit risk or default risk which we will talk about later futures are standardized forms of a uh, forward contract so whatever underlying asset is being bought and sold is clearly defined and futures contracts take place on a uh, exchange so in pakistan futures contracts happen on the pakistan mercantile exchange the pakistan mercantile exchange or any exchange for that matter helps ensure that both the long and the short fulfill their contracts hence there is no credit risk or default risk swap contracts are essentially an exchange of cash flows and this is slightly complicated so we will talk about this in detail later but all you need to memorize right now is swap contracts are basically exchanges of cash flows between two parties option contracts so we broadly speaking have call options and uh, and put options a call option gives the holder of a call option the right but not the obligation to buy an underlying asset at a given price by a given date so for example we might have a call option on a stock with a call option strike price of 25 and a 3 month period 
so this is saying that if I am long on the call option I can buy the stock for $25 within three months now when will I exercise this option I will exercise this option if the stock price is above 25 so let's say at maturity or just before maturity the price of the stock is equal to 30 then it makes sense for me to exercise the option because I can go to the person who wrote the option also called the short party and pay him $25 get uh, get the share and then sell it in the market for $30 and pocket the $5 now I did not get this option for free when I bought this call option I paid a option premium let's say in my example that option premium was $1 so let's say on 1st January I paid $1 to the party that wrote the call option and I essentially got the option to buy the underlying for $25 at maturity the price of the stock was 30 so I chose to exercise the option and got five dollars my profit then was five minus four which is one a lot more on this later for now let's also very quickly understand a put option so put option is the right to sell so with a stock let's say again with, with a put option let's say I have a put option on a stock where again the exercise price is 25 the maturity is three months with put option I make money when the price goes down so now let's say if the price goes down to 25 or actually let me make it 20 so if the price goes down to 20 then my option to sell for 25 makes uh, is, is, is good for me why because at maturity I can go to the short party this is the party that sold me the put option let's say this party sold me the put option for $2 so I on 1st Jan I put this uh, bought the put option for two dollars which gave me the right to sell at this exercise price of 25 if at maturity the price is 20 then what I can do is I can go to the market buy the share for 20 and then go to the party the short party or the party that wrote the put option and sell him the stock for 25 so essentially I make five dollars and since I had paid two dollars for this option my profit is five minus two which is three if this stuff is new to you you might not have fully followed and that's okay we will see this in detail later okay more investments we can also have insurance contracts so with insurance contracts we pay a certain premium on a monthly basis or a annual basis and the insurance company essentially insures our asset let's say we've insured our factory and we are paying a thousand dollar premium per year then what is happening is if the factory is destroyed then the insurance company will pay the cost of either the whole factory or restoring the factory depending on whatever the agreement is so these contracts are also considered a uh, investment credit default swaps or CDSs have become extremely popular in the last few years and they were also at the heart of the recent financial crisis but we don't need to get into too many details at level one just need to understand that a credit default swap is essentially a insurance on a loan so for example if I have uh, if I have made a 10 million dollar loan so I have lent money so for me this is an asset so when I uh, let's say this is a bank let's say I'm a bank and I have issued a 10 million dollar loan to a textile company so this is a asset or an advance on my balance sheet of 10 million dollars what is the risk that I face the risk that I face is that the, the textile company will not repay me so in order to insure myself against the risk of the textile company not paying me I might invest in a CDS or buy a CDS so I might go to an insurance company 
and say that I want to insure myself against the textile company not paying me back the 10 million dollars that insurance on this loan is called a uh, CDS so essentially I pay a certain premium to the insurance company and the insurance company will will give me money if the textile company defaults on the loan so when I essentially own a CDS then I'm not as concerned with the not as concerned with the textile company paying me or not paying me commodities uh, again have become extremely popular forms of investments in the last few years so you can have commodities such as gold uh, copper so these are metals you can have agricultural products we can have a whole host of products and generally commodities have a relatively low correlation with traditional investments and hence they are uh, they add a nice diversification benefit to most portfolios real assets i've already talked about earlier so with real assets you have property plant equipment etc so 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 these are examples of putting your money in a asset that you can touch and feel